Hello, Kaadu. Episode for the course subject with descriptive title participation and teaching assistantship with field study 2. Our learning objectives. 1. Be familiar about action research and its importance to reflective teaching. 2. Use concepts and processes of action research. 3. Identify sample models of action research. 4. Analyze teaching learning problems prevailing in the classroom. 5. Revisit concepts of learning environment in the context of the current teaching and learning situations. 6. Enumerate advantages of face-to-face -face learning environment. 7. Explore the different ways of establishing a safe and conducive online or virtual learning environment. 8. Explain classroom routines. 9. Establish classroom routines and procedures before and after classes in a face-to-face -face or in remote learning. Every teacher is action researcher. Every problem situated in our teaching environment is a source of motivation to improve instructional techniques and strategies. There is a gap to be bridged between what is intended to happen and what actually occurs in the classroom. How do we solve it? Yes, through action research. Action research is a combination of two important terms. Action which means exerting movement to improve practice and research which means finding things out and coming to a new understanding that create new knowledge. Based on the idea of inquiry, Dewey, 1920, various proponents defined action research as a process of continuing inquiry. In 1953, Stephen Corey delimited the definition as the process through which practitioners like teachers, study their own practice to solve their personal or professional practical problems. Hence, the Teacher Action Research TAR, initiates immediate solutions to instructional problems with the application of observation, reflection and inquiry and effects better instruction. Donald Sean, 1987, introduced the idea of reflective practices, reflection in action, the exploration of professional beliefs, practices and experiences during teaching, Bulletin of Education and Research, 2017, and Reflection on Action, a systematic reflection on past experiences with the aim of developing new strategies of action. Both are distinctly similar to the process of accomplishing an action research. What are the concepts, processes and models of action research? Action research is a type of practical, theoretical and transitional in generating new insights. Action research is a type of practical, theoretical and transitional process in generating new insights. The core characteristics of an action research, Titchen, 2015, includes the following, systematic. It follows a sequential order, rigorous. It follows a strict adherence to the rules of empirical studies, reflective. It involves a continuous reflection and action, situational. It emphasizes location, schools, circumstances, teaching, learning and others. Participative. It involves involvement and engagement among direct clients, future-oriented. It seeks possible solutions to present problems for future refinement. Why is action research useful to me as a teacher researcher? Action research helps in the acquisition of new knowledge directed to the development of instructional materials and assessment based from a range of research methods essential in an area of specialization. What classroom situations instigate action researches? Among these classroom situations include transformation in classroom practices, establishment of curriculum restructuring, enhancement of instruction, comprehension and engagement between teaching and learning. Models and guides in conducting an action research There are various action research processes and models in the writing of an action research. Among them, includes McNiff and Whitehead, 2006, or the recursive process of observe reflect act evaluate modify, Nelson, O, 2014, or a cycle following observe reflect plan and act, in the Department of Education, due 2016, 2017 with components such as content and context, action research questions, proposed innovation, intervention strategy, action research methods, participants, data gathering methods and analysis plan, action research work plan, cost estimate, plan for dissemination and utilization and references. How do I match problematic learning situation with probable action? First, identify the problem. Where can one find problems? Everywhere. They can be initially detected from observations and experiences which are the processes which you are into now. What makes it a problem? Get your facts straight. Have you read a corpus of researches to frame your possible questions? Which reputable references are your sources of information? Do you have enough evidence to support your action researches claim of action? 
Then, find an action as a solution. Make a choice for your action. Each solution should match the identified problem. The more established solutions, the more feasible program of action can be initiated and can be accomplished. For example, Miss Yen is a senior high school teacher in a laboratory secondary unit. She has 60 learners in her class, half of them cannot solve simple equations derived from the laws of logarithm. She has repeatedly discussed and gave examples for three weeks for them to follow yet there was no signs of progress still. This situation makes Miss Yen worry a lot because it will eventually affect her teaching performance and evaluation. What is Miss Yen's problem? 30 learners who cannot comprehend and solve simple equations derived from the laws of logarithm. What is the possible solutions to the problem? A. Plan an intervention schedule after classes to meet learners' needs. B. Establish peer mentoring to engage all learners in the task. C. Modify teaching strategy. I use stories as springboard to show realistic situations where students can find attachment to the task like using familiar names, inserting trending figures and events or inclusion of an influencer to get their attention and hook them in the lesson. What solution can solve Miss Yen's problem? How can it solve the identified problem? Three given solutions are feasible. The first two are routinely approaches while the third one is a practical and creative technique integrating all disciplines. By modifying her teaching strategies, students are expected to be motivated because they find the task unconventional yet engaging. Does the solution match with the problem? Yes, students' slow pace of learning and solving simple equations derived from the laws of algorithms might be an effect of their demotivation and disengagement to the lesson, subject or task which implied a possible modification of teaching strategies as a solution. How to prepare the learning environment? The learning environment, or a conventional classroom, is a space in school that supports student learning. Chairs are arranged facing a teacher's table and modifications are made to cater to teaching deliveries and learning outcomes. A conducive learning environment must be flexible, opportunity to have small groups, openness, shared learning corners, access to resources, existing and prepared audiovisual material, safe, clean and accommodating atmosphere. Hence, a classroom climate must nurture the holistic development of learners. What specific strategies can be employed to establish optimum classroom climate? 1. Project a learning environment highlighting belongingness, competence, security, and order among others. 2. Establish a sense of order. 3. Establish a classroom routines and procedures. 4. Encourage collaborative and participative endeavors. 5. Successes whether big or small are celebrated for encouragement and motivation. How to enhance a face-to-face -face or in-person classroom environment for learning. An instructional connection between the teacher and learners which are physically present in a time set in the classroom is very important. A face-to-face -face learning environment promotes greater understanding from real-world examples, learns more comfortably in a familiar situation, interacts relevantly to connect and to solve problems together with others and concentrates better in the completion of the course work due to less distraction elsewhere. The conventional teaching learning situation was changed drastically because of the effects of the pandemic. Few transitional developments on the preparation of instructional materials and the delivery and the implementation of teaching modalities were done in the education workforce and other sectors. How to make online or virtual learning environment safe and conducive. The new normal education, schools aligned physical to flexible spaces that integrate various technology to support the 21st learning opportunities. The elements of a connected devices such as gadgets, tablets, smartphones, b audiovisual tools like projectors touch screen displays, and c purposeful furniture such as standing desks, collaborative workstations, cyberspace for students are included to learn in various ways. The online learning environment requires a constant access to connectivity which allows learning to take place anytime, anyplace and anywhere. The inclusion of virtual classrooms refer to digital learning environment that allows teachers and students to connect online in real time. They can be delivered asynchronously or synchronously. 
What are the differences between synchronous and asynchronous learning? What are the safety reminders to remember in online or virtual classroom? 1. Encourage parents' involvement. Assist them how to set up appropriate home learning spaces, if students will be learning from home too. Make interactive lesson plans. Make guided assignments as possible. Outsource research sites to ensure online safety and to provide resources for students. 3. Encourage respectful public chatting. 4. Follow responsible usage of technology and netiquette. Secrecy and confidentiality of passwords should be observed. How do I establish my own classroom routines and procedures in face-to-face -face or remote learning? Classroom routines are indispensable for an effective learning environment. A. Clearly defined and well-established classroom management procedures at the start of the school year ensures valuable classroom time, smooth activity flow, engagement and order, and focused instruction for learners. Whether in the classroom or remotely, classroom routines should be the first consideration before the start of any academic activity. Learners can take active roles in establishing classroom routines. How do you establish classroom routines and procedures? Be guided with the following questions. 1. How will I gain student attention in the classroom remote learning? 2. What are the routines and procedures that I need to establish before, during and after my classes whether on a face-to-face -face or remote learning? 3. What verbal and non-verbal communication will I use to signal that students need help, attention in the classroom remote learning? 4. How must students get, secure the needed work materials and books and others in the classroom remote learning? 5. How will students transition to group work and other cooperative activities in the classroom remote learning? 6. What procedures must be followed by students who need to attend to personal necessities in the classroom online classes? 7. What rules must be set for students who finish task early, and for those who cannot complete work on time? 8. What procedures must be observed for tardiness, early dismissal? 9. What procedures must be done when submitting homework, performance tasks in the classroom, remote learning? 10. What procedures must be employed in movements into and out of the classroom, remote learning? Now, it is your turn. Write 5 classroom routines for implementation in your class. There you have it ka adu. I hope you make your experience productive and efficient in participation, teaching assistantship and internship. See you for the next episode.